All right, guys, we're pulling into our favorite power sports dealership. Coach East Motorsports in Sierra Vista. If you guys are around the area, I suggest you come here if you're looking for a fair deal and good customer service. Definitely, probably, definitely, I would say, not more than probably, the best dealership uh, experience by far. So come check them out. We are going to walk inside, find a salesman, and we're picking up our new unit here. So. All right, we are here. Cochise Motorsports. They got Honda, Polaris, Victory, Yamaha. If you guys in the market for any of those? Southern Arizona. Head on down here. They got a whole pile of inventory, new and used. Got some R Maxes over there. A bunch of Razors. Look at this. We even got a used Renegade. Check this out. Used Renegade here. Pretty cool. Actually, very similar to the one I had, and uh, same as same as my wife has. That's how hers looked uh, before we switched it all over to black and uh, pink. So, pretty neat. So let's head on inside and we'll see where our new unit is. If we can find it, and our salesman. See a pretty awesome showroom here. They got KO here too. If you're looking for something really cheap and entry level, they sell those. Got a bunch of youth ATVs on the floor. What? YFZ50s and Raptor 110s. Bunch of dirt bikes, Yamahas. And, oh boy, I see something cool on the floor. What is it? Boom, check it out guys, look at this thing. This is it right here, the new unit. So all we gotta do is find our salesman, sign some paperwork, hand over some cash, and uh, we're gonna take this thing home. Today we're gonna get it loaded up in the Gladiator. Bought this for my son, uh, he had the Outlaw 110, we got rid of that, sold that a while back, and we've been waiting for this thing, we've had a deposit on it, waiting for it to come in. Got the call this morning that it was in, and so here it is. He has zero idea. Uh, my son has zero idea that it's been it's been delivered and it's at the dealer and we're going to get it. He thinks my wife and I went up shopping to the mall today. So uh, he doesn't know we're picking this up. We're gonna come home with it. He's gonna be absolutely blown away. And um, yeah, really nice. I love the color scheme. It's like the nice retro red with the white and blue. Really, really cool. He's gonna freak out and love this thing. Awesome stuff. So let's go find our salesman, Pablo, and make it happen. All right, guys, here he is. We're gonna give him a hard time. Hey, hey, it's Mr. Pablo. Hey, What's up, man? You can be on camera. Hey, bro, how you doing? This is the oh, man right here. Oh, my this gosh. is Pablo. My hair doesn't even look good No, today, that's dude. right, you yeah, look great, like, dude. It's yeah. all about the deals. Yeah. <laughs> so Pablo here has sold us six units yeah. in the last three years. <laughs> we bought the uh, Raptor here. That was the first unit, and we've okay. gotten six units from him. So if you guys want an awesome deal, come to Coach East Motorsports. Give Pablo a call. He'll come hook you up. He'll hook you up. I can't do math. No, no, so. no crazy fees <laughs> at the end of the deal. They, yeah. they give fair, fair, honest deals. So come check them out, guys. Cool. All right, guys. So we got it in the garage. My son has no idea it's in here. We're going to get him out and surprise him. So I'm going to set the camera up on the tripod, and let's see what his reaction is. Bro. What's up, man? What do you got? What's going on out here, dude? You're lying. <laughs> I'm lying? What do you think, man? God. You think you're going to be the coolest kid on the block or what? You like it? How you like that helmet, man? It's pretty cool, huh? American flag. Matches the quad. Hop on there, dude. Let's see. Let's see how you look. Oh, you got Crocs on, man. Or Crocs and quads. All right. Just, just for today, we can we can get away with that for today. Mom made me wear it. <laughs> he thinks he's unloading groceries out of the car. 
You actually tricked me. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You're one loading groceries, huh? This is about the groceries, ain't it? No, dear. Right, put the key in. You know how to start it? Just like your old one. Can I start it? Yep, turn the key on. Right. And then the start button is on your left. Put the push the red switch on first in the middle. Okay, did the did the green light on the dash come on? Mm -hmm. Okay, now hit the start button. What? The start button's on the left right above the red switch. Right here. That's your lights. Start button. Down below. Down below the red switch, sorry. <laughs> Turn your lights on. Turn the lights on, man. Wow. Those the other switches for your high beams. Dude, pretty cool, huh? Fancy. You're right. You're gonna ride this tomorrow around the yard? Give it a shot. Yes. yes. Give give it a little gas. <laughs> it's not a 110 anymore, huh? <laughs> All right. You happy? You love it? Two thumbs up. All right, guys. So as you've seen, and as you can see now, it's a little dirty. I'm trying to teach him how to shift. There you go. All right, he's got it. Just cruising around second gear. Getting the feel of the bike. And, uh, so he was riding it a little bit. It's uh, Monday now. When we picked it up, it was Friday. So it's been a few days. Uh, we did a little bit, a couple little things to the quad. So I'll go over that with you. And we'll do a nice little walk around here. These things have been around forever. Um, but there have been some changes over the years. Um, when they first came out, it's a quick history on the 250X. Um, so when this style 250X first came out, I say this style because back in the day, in the, in the 80s, um, the 250X was a completely different machine. Totally different motor, totally different frame. This is not anything like the original 87 Honda 4Trax uh, 250X. This is a totally different machine. That machine became the Honda 300, and for a while they had the 300, and then this 250 was introduced in 2000, 2001. When they first introduced it, there was no clutch lever. So you have what was called an auto clutch. Uh, when you let, it was a centrifugal clutch in there, and when you let off the gas, the clutch released, and you could shift without having to pull in a lever. On these newer ones, in about 2006, they added what's called a sport clutch, and even to that, there's been a little bit of change from what I've found. So the spore clutch, the way the spore clutch works is you're going to use the clutch and shift just like you would a traditional ATV, but the quad will not stall. So if you come to a stop and, do, and don't pull the clutch in, it will not stall. If you are in neutral and you put it in gear and you let off the clutch, you'll, you'll feel... The clutch grab but then that's it and stop the, the bike won't start rolling and uh, it won't stall on you so you can essentially and like what my son's been doing is he put it put it up in like second gear and then cruise around the yard a little bit kind of get the feel for how the machine's reacting turning just get comfortable sitting on it and riding it 
and then introducing him slowly to listening to the motor and being able to shift. So it's nice because it's a lot, it's a big change for a younger rider to learn how to use a clutch. And when you couple that with, you know, stalling the machine and stuff like that, it can be frustrating for a younger rider. So this is perfect platform. And it's also fun for an adult. I mean, you can go out and trail ride, an adult can trail ride this thing um, and have a lot of fun on it. Um, so it's, it's a really nice little machine. And so the thing, the different thing I found about the sport clutch now though, is there people online have said in the past that you can shift without using the clutch. But I will tell you this machine, this is a 2024 does, you cannot do that. You can shift it into first gear, uh, from neutral and, but you know, second to third and third to fourth and to fifth, it, you cannot shift it. It will not let you shift it unless you pull the clutch in. And maybe the earlier models you could, but maybe they change that just for, you know, so you don't burn up the clutch and ruin the transmission. I would say, I would imagine. So I don't know. This is a 2024 model. Like I said, I've seen people online say, uh, that you could shift it without using the clutch. And I can tell you, you cannot do that on this machine. I've tried it. So it will not shift with, unless you pull the clutch in. If, you, if you're driving in second gear uh, or first gear even, you take off and you're going to upshift to second and into third. Those shifts, if you go to shift it without pulling in the clutch lever, it will not shift. So in years past, you could do that. You could do it both ways. You cannot do that like that on the 24s. I don't know what at what point that changed. But I can tell you, for fact, on this 2024 model, you cannot shift it once you once you start going uh, into another gear without using the clutch. So to get past all that, do a little quick walk around. You'll see the helmet. You got a nice little matching helmet. We actually, initially, you got him a different helmet. You see it earlier in the video, probably like the Stars and Stripes one. Ended up not fitting him, so we had to return it. They didn't have one in the size, so he picked out this one, which he liked, and uh, it fits him perfect. And it even matches the quad a lot better, too. So... Perfect color scheme there. And so we did two things to the quad. I'll show you. Get the helmet off the seat here. So the first thing I did was add, um, I rejetted the carburetor, just the idle jet. Uh, it comes with a 38 factory, factory idle jet, I believe is a 38. Um, I put a 40 in it. And now she starts mint, no issues. Uh, cold start, no problem. When we first, the day we brought the machine home, it was only about 60 degrees and uh, got it home, got it out of the truck and it gave us a hell of a time starting it. And um, the next morning too, same thing. So I said, well, I'm not. That's obviously tuned very lean uh, from the factory just to make the government happy. So I just put a 40 idle jet in there and now she starts up mint. As soon as you touch the start button, no choke, just fires right up. So if you get one of these um, and it's frustrating you with the cold start, just bump up to idle jet one and you'll be good to go. So we also added an hour meter before we started using it. This way we can keep track of maintenance and all that stuff. That's nice to do when you first get it. So I just ran that, you know, obviously from the spark plug wire and then I put it under the seat here. I'll show you. So under the seat where the battery is and you have your air, air intake, everything's nice and accessible. I just put the hour meter right down there. So you got, it comes with a little tool kit and that's under the seat. Not much to see, but battery, air box and tool kit and now an hour meter. So that's that. Other than that, bike stock. Um, I wouldn't exactly call those major mods, but they are two things we did nonetheless. And so this is, if you guys have been following the channel since the beginning, first, I thank you. And second, this is the um, first Honda on the channel. You guys know we have Yamaha Raptor 350, a Raptor 700, and we have Polaris uh, Sport um, Scrambler S, and we have a Renegade 1000 Can-Am. But we've never had a Honda on the channel, so now we do. So we got a variety of machines. Um, this thing, I, I love the way it looks. The color scheme, beautiful. Uh, they also make it for in 2024 in orange and black. And my son fell in love with this color. We were looking online. I was showing them the ATV. And um, when we were thinking about 
bumping him up from the 110. And he picked this color right away. And I'm glad he did it. This is, you know, retro, old school Honda colors with the white plastics and the red with the little bit of, little touch of blue. And the graphics, really nice. So I, I really like it. Uh, and I'll tell you what, the styling is really nice. I mean, if you just looked at this thing really quick glance, it would, you swear it could be a 400 or a 450. Just the styling is really nice. Obviously, it's a much smaller bike and narrower, but you just looked at it quick and you didn't know anything, know any better. Um, you can mistake it easily for a different bike. The um, comfort of it, I'll tell you, the, I was actually pretty surprised. It, it's very comfortable. And I'm going to do like a first ride on it myself, take it out on the trails over here. Kind of give you guys my impressions as we're, as, we're, as we're taking it out and showing you some of its abilities, but... Just riding it around my property and um, feeling the way the suspension works. It's very plush, very, very nice. Um, and the shocks are just standard gas shocks. There's nothing fancy, but they are Showa. Made by Showa, they sit right on there on the bottom. So really, they're not like, you know, bottom end um, garbage. You know, they are, they are decent, but obviously an upgrade to Elkas or something like that would... Do it, do it a world of good. And maybe down the road, we'll do something like that. They do make replacement shocks for these. So that may be something to look into down the road. But I think the first thing we're going to do with it, first major mods, um, is some skip plates just for protection. Um, and then maybe after that, we'll do an, an exhaust system and then, you know, bigger main jet in the carburetor. I think the exhaust would help um, to also teaching him how to listen to the motor. This is very quiet, this quad right now, as it's, as it comes from the factory. And so listening to the motor and for a young rider and learning when to shift and, you know, listening to the RPMs and exhaust helps with that. It doesn't have to be a super loud exhaust, but something with a little, little rumble, little tone to, uh, give you some better idea of where the RPMs are. And, uh, help you with listening to the motor and learn how to shift for a younger rider. That's pretty key. So, so those will be the first few mods and then we'll kind of play it by ear and go from there. I am really uh, impressed so, thus far with the tires, stock tires. They come with 22s, so the 22s front and rear. I believe when they were first introduced in early in 2000s, this machine had 20 inch tires. It's got 22s now um, and they're really nice tread. Um, they're Maxxis tires. Fronts are Maxxis also. The fronts look actually very similar to tires, the stock tires on a Raptor. So it's, um, I don't have them here anymore because I got rid of them. I don't have the stock tires on my Raptor anymore, but they, they look awfully similar to me. Um, so they very well possibly could be. So a quick walk around of it. I'm gonna fire it up for you, show you guys how good it starts with the uh, with the new jet and the carburetor. Let's throw it on in neutral. There you go. This thing hasn't run since yesterday. No choke. I mean, it's unbelievable. Idle's perfect. That thing never would have started with the uh, stock uh, idle jet in the carburetor. The 38, way too lean. Uh, you would have had to choke it and it's 70 degrees out today. Uh, you would have needed to choke. Uh, there's plenty of people online that have talked to about it. If you're looking, looking on some other YouTube videos, um, you'll, you'll see that's definitely, it's a complaint that people have from the factory with them being very lean and uh, finicky when it's cold to start. So quick uh, idle jet swap and starts right up. Purrs like a kitten. As far as maintenance on these things, super, I mean, these got to be the easiest thing to maintain. You have, you don't have a chain, it's shaft driven. So you have a shaft drive, which comes through the rear swing arm, and then you have a rear differential. The rear differential takes um, 80, 80, 90 gear oil or 75, 90, whatever you got. Um, drain it, refill it. The service interval on that is 100 hours in the owner's manual, obviously. 
there's no way on the planet I'm going to let it go 100 hours. But uh, even once a year, you change, depending on how much riding you do, but change the rear diff fluid, change the oil. Super easy. You have your oil dipstick here. This also has an oil cooler. So that's nice. Keeps temps down a little bit that way. Obviously, it's an air-cooled motor. Um, so drain bolt underneath. There's no oil filter on these motors. Drain comes out and there's like a spring and a screen. Same thing you would have if you're familiar with the smaller kids uh, ATVs like the uh, Polaris Outlaw 110s or 90s and Raptor 90s, stuff like that. There's no oil filters. They just uh, a screen at the end of a spring when you take the drain bolt out. So one thing you wouldn't think though, when you check the oil on these, they do need to be checked at oper does need to be checked at operating temperature. So you're gonna start the quad, you're gonna let it run three to four minutes, shut it down, let it sit a minute or two, pull your dipstick, wipe it clean, and then just stick it in. Do not screw it back in, and then that's how you check the oil on these. So they do need to be checked at temperature. Uh, and that is per the owner's manual. I'm not making that up. So you'll see they added here some smog stuff to the, like all the ATVs these days, you have um, an air injection system now. So I haven't noticed any decel pop or anything like that. The bigger idle jet probably helped with that. But you, there you'll see the smog pump. I'm sure there's, way, there's an easy way to bypass that. You know, take the pump out like you do on the Raptor and stuff like that, and then um, plug up the hose, but doesn't seem to be creating any adverse effects, Effects, I should say, so um, we'll just leave it be for now. And this side, right next to it too, you'll see you have your fuel petcock for your fuel tank, turn the, turn the fuel on and off. It's a 2.5 one gallon uh, fuel tank, and you know, this, this little motor will probably last forever on a tank of fuel. So pretty fuel efficient, and the owner's manual also does say you can use regular octane, 87 octane. I only buy 91 or 93 octane, depending on what I can get, minimum 91, because my three of my other machines all require 91, so I just fill up my gas cans all at 91, and that's what every machine I have is 91 octane. As far as other things on the machine, that's really all the maintenance. Uh, there's no grease circuit for things that I have found. Um, they're all sealed A-arm bushings and no, I haven't, I haven't found any grease fittings. Maybe possibly on the shaft drive, but I don't believe that has any either from what I can see. So, like I said, fairly simple maintenance. Uh, so that's nice. You know, they can just ride it. You dump the oil once in, you know, once in a while, depending on how many hours you're putting on it. That's why I got the hour meter on there. You can keep track of that. I suggest you do that on a new machine. But it's a really proven, reliable machine. I mean, people, they've been selling these for years. Uh, super durable. This is like, when you hear about Honda reliability and durability, the, this is a machine that lives up to that. You could just beat the hell out of it, change the oil, and it's going to just run, probably outlive you. It'll just run forever. It's old school Honda technology, pretty much, and it just runs. Uh, they've had they got these motors in their Recon 250s as well, same engine, so it's definitely you know a workhorse. It's not the most powerful motor, but it gets up and goes. It's quick. If you pop the clutch, you pull the front tires. This thing will wheelie all day long. Uh, it's actually easy to wheelie this machine than my Raptor, <laughs> believe it or not. I can get the front tires off this off the ground in this thing just popping the clutch like. With the Raptor, you have so much power. Um, you know, if you don't have good traction, it's just spinning. This thing just just comes right up. It's 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 a blast to ride. Um, so, suspension's been, like I said, pretty good. That's, those show shocks. I'm actually fairly impressed. They're pretty soft, uh, but not too soft. Doesn't seem to like bottom out. I rode it a little bit aggressively in the backyard yesterday, and um, my wife my wife even got on it and tried it out. She's uh, never ridden a sport quad before, so she was on there. Was, we were teaching her how to shift. Actually, my son was talking her through how to shift, so he's picking up on it that quick. So it was, it was fun. She was pop, popping it in reverse, and I said, "Wait, well, how did you figure out how to put it in reverse?" And she's like, "Oh, Ryan told me." So he's already teaching mom. So uh, that's that cracked me up. That's fun, um, and he's he's really into it. You know, he's really enjoying. Um, the learning process he's not really frustrated and i think the fact that you got the sport clutch and 
you don't have to worry about it stalling. Um, makes it more enjoyable, you know what I mean? When, you can't, when, you, when you're having a hard time picking up on that and stalling it up the bike all the time, it can be frustrating. So this is, this is great, great platform. Good looking machine, uh, easy maintenance. I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. It's just um, really perfect for a youth, um, a young rider, uh, and even for adult, for casual trail riding. You can ride this um, and have a lot of fun on it, you know. Um, I would definitely, if, you're, if, you, if you don't have a lot of money and you want to buy yourself a new machine and you can't afford, you know, a Raptor or a YFZ, and you just want to get out and have some fun on the trails with your family and your kids. Nothing wrong with this. You know, your kids ride around some 110s or 90s or whatever, and you want to get yourself something just to ride around some trails with them as a, as a dad or a mom. Perfect. You know, this is, there's, I wouldn't have any hesitation as an adult. Um, if money was tight and I couldn't afford, you know, the machines I have, I'd ride this no problem. I'd have, and have plenty of fun doing it. It's um, really that that well built and um, that enjoyable, especially with the clutch and the uh, five speed transmission. It makes it makes a lot of fun, and the, and the fact that it's low maintenance is awesome. The headlights halogen, but I will tell you, it throws a lot of light for that one halogen bulb. I'm I'm extremely surprised. Um, what we're I'll, that'll probably be something we do eventually too is just swap the bulb out for an LED. And uh, but but it does throw a lot of light at night. He was actually riding it. Um, the day after we got it, we I did the check the fluids on it and made sure you know the oil the air filter was oiled properly and all that stuff. Kind of kind of give it a, give the machine a once over. And I suggest you do that anything new you buy. Don't trust anybody else to do it. Um, I always give all machines machines a once over when I first buy them before we use them. And um, so it was getting dark uh, that next day after I was done doing that stuff and. He wanted to take it around the, around the yard a few laps, and it was the light was great. It lit up the lit up the whole backyard uh, while he was riding. So, it does throw plenty of light. So that's 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 pretty impressive. A lot of eight, new ATVs, uh, you know, the Raptors, for example, stock headlights on those. They're horrible, like candles in the wind. I got the rest, resto quad ones on there now. They're great, but stock headlights. This is probably better than those, if I'm being honest. Um, Aftermarket support on these is great because they've been making them so long and it's a Honda. Um, you can actually buy things for them and, and make it and customize them. You know, if you want to widen it out a little bit, they have wheel spacers. Um, I know Full Flight, I think it was, used to make a set of uh, A-arms for the front, like plus two A-arms. And Dura Blue used to make a, a bigger rear axle for the back. I'm not sure if they still do, um, but might be worth contacting those companies and see. And then you can you can put one inch wheel spacers around it if you want to add a little width. And obviously the lug pattern is traditional Honda. You have Ricochet makes full set of skid plates. You have a uh, plethora of options for exhaust. You know HMF. Um, I think FMF makes a pipe. Big Gun makes an exhaust. Um, there's there's a variety of exhausts aftermarket exhaust you can get from, and it's obviously carbureted so. Rejet it and you're done. Um, you can replacement uni air filters, handlebars, uh, front bumper options out there. Elka makes shocks for it. And so there's a lot of stuff you can do to these things. Uh, I think, I believe ATV On Demand did a, a light build up on one of these and tested one out in back uh, 2016 model. Very similar to this. And so you can kind of see the difference it makes. Just doing an exhaust on this and rejetting the carburetor is going to add a ton more power because they're really choked up from the factory. You can see how small the exhaust pipe is. I mean, that exhaust pipe is not much bigger than my thumb. So you put a bigger exhaust on here. I mean, look at this. It's not that, that's, in, in, that's the outside of the pipe. Inside the pipe, I could probably barely fit my thumb in there, I'll bet you. So you, you do an exhaust on this and... Uh, Reject the carb, go up like probably two sizes on the main, I would imagine. I think stock, it's a 95. If you went up to like a 105, 110 with an exhaust, and it's really going to let this thing open up and breathe. And you'll get a lot lot more power. That'll be a big improvement for these little air-cooled uh, engines. Do, opening up the exhaust and jetting the carburetor really makes a big difference. So 
that's another thing too. If you're a little more experienced rider and you want to get a couple more ponies out of it, you can do that right out of the box and make a big difference. So that's pretty much it, guys. Kind of want you to introduce it to the channel. We are going to do some mods to it. So kind of check in now and then. Subscribe to the channel if, you, if you're not. And um, we'll keep you up to date on it. I'll probably take it for a little rip uh, some, some point here soon. Um, and give you guys my thoughts on it as we're riding it, you know, on the trails. So we'll do a little test ride on it. If you guys are interested in that. But, yeah, Ryan psyched. He loves it. Bumped up from that 110. That was a, it's a big, big, big bump from the 110. I can tell you that. Though. He was really riding that 110 with, like, throttle almost pinned sometimes for long periods of time. Um, especially in sandy conditions or out in the dunes. So it was, it was time. And uh, the bike, he fits on it pretty good, but he's got plenty of room to grow into it. It'll last him for a long, long time, into his teenage years probably. And uh, so that's why we bought a, bought a new one too. You can pick up one of these used out there for, you know, under two grand. Uh, they've been making them for so long. You can find one that's well-maintained on Marketplace or Craigslist or something. And you could probably pick an old one up, maybe needs a little bit of TLC for like, for less than $2,000. And... Um, and, and keep running it. You know, it's a Honda, so maybe a little, maybe it'll, it'll need a little couple hundred dollars in maintenance items. But if you don't want to spend the money on a new one, the new ones, you know, out the door are going to cost you over six grand, you know, with tax, title, license. Um, obviously, as you've seen earlier in the video, I work with a great dealership. And I, every once in a while, it's good to check other dealers and just to see if they really are giving you the best deal. I mean, they, I contacted, so I'll give you an example. I paid 63 for this out the door. That was with tax, everything. I contacted two other dealerships, Honda dealerships. They wanted over $7,000 out the door. I mean, I don't know how it is on the East Coast or up North. Uh, maybe you can get better deals. But out West here, these things hit the floor and they're gone. Um, or they're spoken for before they get there. They just don't get a lot of inventory with them. They're hard to get, hard to grab. And... That those other deals wanted over seven thousand dollars. I said no, forget it. I got a way better, way better. They didn't even believe me that I was paying, you know, the price I was paying for it. They thought I was lying. They didn't understand how the dealer could do that, because basically, just add tax to the MSRP on one of these, and you're and you're at that much. So it's basically not like not paying for prep and freight and paperwork or nothing. So they gave me a nice little discount. Uh, that's why I say they're the best dealer here in Southern Arizona to work with. I've bought six machines from them, Cochise Motorsports. Talk to Pablo over there. Tell him I sent you. I guarantee you he'll get you the best deal um, anywhere for any, for any dealer around here. Um, I've never had a dealer beat one of their prices at all or even come close. So that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for checking out the video. Smash that thumbs up button for the little guy. He's super pumped up. And he keeps track of this stuff, too. He likes to see... Uh, any of the videos he, he's in, how many likes and likes and comments it's, <laughs> it gets. So uh, smash the thumbs up button for the little guy. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And this is Joe with Odyssey Off-Road. We'll catch you guys on the next one. We're in the Honda family.